Lecture 11 quiz review on biotechnology is actually one of my favorites. I'm not biased or anything, but I am teaching in the biotech program, and this is actually, this is where the rubber hits the road. This is where biology and a lot of application happen, uh, especially things that are relevant to your life, which is why I feel this is a really fun and important one. And it's not too difficult quiz-wise, so it's pretty straightforward in what I'm going to ask you. Three out of your 10 questions are going to be on recombinant DNA. Now, what does that mean? Well, it's what we talked about, transgenic organisms. You're going to have one question basically on the definition of transgenic organisms. You're going to have a second question on what you can um, make with transgenic organisms. And a third question on examples of transgenic organisms. Now, for the example one, you do not have to exhaustively research every example out there. I can't even look up all of them. But here's the key to answering this quiz question on examples. When I say which of the following is not an example of a transgenic organism, you basically rule out any question that says a gene from a fish into a strawberry plant or a gene from a bacteria into a human cell, or a gene from a plant into a bacteria cell. Basically, if you see two species in the answer, don't choose it, because that's a transgenic organism. Taking DNA or a gene from one species and putting it into another, that's transgenics. Look for something like humans make hemoglobin, or bacteria make um, uh, enzymes to... Um, you know, break down food or something like that, or, you know, or, or enzymes to make their cell wall, or it's not going to have two species in it. So it doesn't matter. I'm not going to give you a whole long list of things. It's just the concept is if you take DNA from one species and put it into another, it's a transgenic organism. Now, as far as the products of transgenics, one of the key things to understanding this is if it's a biochemical process, which is essentially a fancy word for saying an enzymatic process, um, the sky's the limit. You know, it could be chemicals, vitamins, vaccines, enzymes, pesticides, all that kind of stuff. What you'll be looking for in that question are actual organisms like a bacteria or an archaea or some type of germline cell, like a sperm or an egg, or a, we call them gametes. We cannot create cells with transgenics. All we can do is alter some of the genetics, add a gene in, add an enzyme that will do some job. That's all this is all about. So if it's any type of product that has to do with a chemical or a vitamin or so on, that's, yeah, all that's fair game. There's so many things that are produced today, insulin and, uh, you know, you name it. But we cannot create new organisms through transgenics. We're just altering a gene or two in those organisms. One gene is hard enough to do. Now, there, a fourth question you're going to have on the uh, quiz is on PCR, polymerase chain reaction. And that's because this is such a vital process in biotech. Nothing would be possible. Transgenics, engineering, bioengineering, uh, sequencing DNA, processing microarrays, none of it without PCR. And so this is one question. Just make sure you understand it's an amplification process. It's what allows scientists to be able to get enough DNA to work with to be able to do that. You know, and that's what this illustration is showing is that you can get a spec of DNA and with these machines amplify the DNA millions of times over to be able to analyze the data. That's really what we're after here is getting enough to work with. Now there are four questions on the following uh, three concepts. DNA sequencing, DNA fingerprinting, and um, DNA microarray. Okay, those are the four main things that we talked about, uh, or three main things we talked about, but there's four questions, okay? So let's go through them in order. DNA sequencing, make sure you understand what it is and what it's for. That's kind of the first question on all of these things is what they are and what they're for. Sequencing spells it out. It basically takes your genetic material and counts what the, gene, what the letters are, G, A, T, A, A, T, C, C. This allows you to basically look and read all the information and find out if there's any mistakes. 
point mutation here, frame shift there, insertion, deletion, any problems. This allows you to literally open up the book and spell it all out. That's what DNA sequencing is for. This is mostly used to discover new mutations for things like cancer or other new problems that aren't common in the human genome. This allows us to not only read what's there, but to see anything new. Now that's different than the microarray. Let me jump ahead to the microarray. Microarrays are tailored for common point mutations or common frame shift mutations that exist in the human genome. These are things that exist in greater than 1% of the population because there's mutations all over the place. But generally, when they get passed on from generation to generation, they become very common. That's what these are for. They don't look at everything. They're looking at you know, a million points of data in 3 billion points of data. So it allows you to look at very specific known mutations to tailor drug treatments, to look at common causes of cancer and all that. This is how Ancestry is done. This is how 23andMe does their stuff. It's cheap, costs them a couple bucks, you know, to run these things. They charge you a hundred, you know. Um, they're, they're very inexpensive, which is why most people use these. They don't give you all the information though. They just give you a little picture of some of the things that are wrong, um, but uh, you cannot discover new mutations with these. You have to know what you're looking for to be able to detect them. That's the, the trade-off for a microarray. Now, you can, one of the nice things about microarrays is they're cheap, and you can get lots of health information from them, okay? and that's why we use them. You can get ancestry, you can get health information on these common mutations. Uh, screens hundreds and hundreds of genes in an instant, you can get the data back in a day. It, it takes a while for them because they, they have this queue, but it doesn't take long for, for them to be able to get this data and information back. Sequencing, on the other hand, costs a lot of money, hundreds and hundreds of dollars. You get lots of information with only a small percentage of it, even today being able to be analyzed. And so this is not something people generally do yet because we just don't know what to do with that much information. Now, DNA fingerprint, is the one that's a little different. This is the one that's used for comparison of DNA patterns. Doesn't tell you any health information, doesn't tell you whether you're gonna get cancer because it's not analyzing the parts of your DNA that matter in that regard. They're not analyzing genes, they're not analyzing proteins or anything like that. It's just analyzing the space in your DNA that it's like a fingerprint. It doesn't do anything for you. You're not going to get cancer because you've got this loop or whirl on the ends of your fingers. It's just an identifying marker. And that's what a DNA fingerprint is. You take blood from a, a crime scene and compare it to a suspect. Hey, that's your blood. Why was that your blood? Because the pattern matches. Or you use it for disaster identification because you can't identify the person and you match it to a sample that from their house, maybe hair follicles or something, and say, yep, this matches matching parents to children. There are patterns, and this is where you'll have your fourth quiz question is on the paternity test. But make sure you know all the reasons why DNA fingerprinting is used and why it's not used. It's not used to know health information because you're not analyzing that information. You're not actually looking at the genes that cause cancer or the genes that lead to Alzheimer's or other things like that. It's just pattern patterns in parts of your DNA that don't do anything. Paternity test. This is the one where I'm actually going to give you both parents short tandem repeats because that's what we look at with the DNA fingerprint. It's 5, 6, 7, 10, 15. And the child is going to be a combination of both parents. So if this parent is 3 and 7 and this parent is 4 and 5 and the child is 3 and 4, then yeah he shares one from each of the parent. But if the mother's three and seven and the father's five and eight and the child's three and four, you're like, nope, doesn't come from that father. So I'm gonna give you a very simple paternity test where I'll give you the short tandem repeats from the mother, the ones from the father, I'll give you the one from the child, and then you tell me whether the child is biologically from both parents, biologically from one, the other, or neither. Okay, there's four different scenarios. So that's the paternity test question. Uh, make sure you understand fundamentally how a paternity test works. Basically, they do a fingerprint of both parents, 
and the child is going to be half of each parent. And I'm going to do a very simplified paternity test for the quiz, okay? Something like this, where um, I'm going to give two short tandem repeats for the mother, two for the father, two for the child. The child needs to have one from each parent for them to be the biological offspring of those parents. That's how sexual reproduction works. We're going to get to that in a few lectures. The last questions you're going to have are on cloning. Two questions on cloning. This is a big part of biotech as well. Therapeutic versus reproductive cloning. Basically, make sure you know the difference between the two. Therapeutic cloning is using cells to regenerate cells and tissues. Reproductive cloning is using cells to regenerate the whole organism. Now, plants naturally do this. You throw a piece of potato in the ground and it will start sprouting and reproduce into a whole new plant to produce more plants. It basically clones itself. That's what we think of when we think of cloning. Problem is, animals aren't good at cloning themselves. They don't reproduce through reproductive cloning. And so that's why you have to use methods like taking the DNA out, putting it into a new cell, trying to grow it up to culture into these embryonic cells. And you know, that's where Dolly came into be. And that animals do not do this naturally, but plants and fungi and other species do. So remember, therapeutic cloning comes from embryonic or adult stem cells to regenerate cells and tissues. Reproductive cloning takes cells like a plant cell and regrows into a whole new plant. That's reproductive cloning. So make sure you know the difference between those two.